Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been almost a year, actually I think it's been over a year now since I have published something on this channel and uh, I sincerely apologize. So you may wonder what's happened. You may not care at all. So if you don't care at all, you can jump ahead in the video. Uh, we are doing a gig log of the Marietta High School prom this year. And uh, it's a pretty cool gig log. We got a pretty cool setup. Uh, I thought it looked and turned out pretty cool. So you can jump ahead. If you do care to hear where we've been, stay tuned. So what happened? Why did I stop posting now for over a year? Well, really what happened was COVID. Uh, that kind of uh, took a turn for the uh, business here just in general. And uh, we didn't have as many gigs. We weren't doing as much. Uh, I didn't have as many gigs to keep the new equipment coming in to review and stuff like that. So we just, uh, we didn't, I didn't put any of my focus into making content. My focus went on trying to keep my business alive. And uh, I have a lot of people to thank for that. Uh, a lot of people helped me out and uh, help just the business out in general. Uh, you know who you are if you're watching this. And uh, yeah, big shout out to, uh, DJ Mixar, he's one of my big uh, helpers here. Uh, DJ Mixar, he's one of the big ones. And a huge shout out to DJ Associates and Event Designs. Uh, Chris and Michelle, you guys are the absolute best. And uh, you have helped us through a lot of this in general. And I absolutely love working for you guys. So uh, yes, I still have my own company. Yes, I'm still gonna keep doing the kind of things that you see on this. Um, but I'm also helping out and working with another company local here too. Uh, we became friends over the past few years and uh, we've really discovered we can make some really cool events when we all work together. So what does this mean? Well, we're gonna keep on doing really cool events. Uh, I'm gonna start putting some effort back into filming and recording these kinds of events. Um, the one we did for this video today is Marietta High School. It was a large prom that we were doing for them. We've done Marietta's prom for the past couple years now, I think. And again, just never had the opportunity to film really for it. But this one, I made time and effort to uh, make sure I film some of it for you all. Uh, pretty cool setup. You will see in the video that at the beginning, I talk about having my subs in cardioid configuration. And then if you see in the videos towards the end, the clips from the actual event, they're not in cardioid anymore. Well, my knowledge and execution of cardioid subs in that instance there with the back wall and stuff like that, uh, I was having a lot more trouble than I thought I was going to have uh, getting the base projection out front. And uh, so eventually I just decided, you know what, there's no need to do this. We have plenty of time. I went ahead and flipped them back around and just ran them in a straight array across the front. So it worked out really, really well. Tons of bass and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how much audio from the event itself I can include in this just due to copyright reasons and how YouTube's been uh, kind of nasty about that lately. Uh, they'll take the video down kind of deal if uh, there's copyrighted content in it that uh, they don't want there. So anyway, enough about me. We're going to be making a bunch of new videos. Stay tuned. We got a lot of really cool stuff coming up. So let's check out Marietta's Homecoming. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long, long time. And as I said there at the intro, that's a little bit of an explanation why. So today we are at Marietta High School and we are doing a prom. Now I am not the main DJ for this today. Alec is the DJ. I'm not even the lighting guy for this. I am just the system guy. So we are gonna take a look at all the stuff that we've got going on here. And we're gonna try to explain a little bit of it to you so you can know a little bit about what's going on here. All right, so here's our system that we've got set up today. We have six of the Carbon LS1802s down front. We actually have the center two inverted. Sorry for the background noise, they're still setting up. Um, the center two are inverted, and that is so we can get somewhat of a cardioid pattern so the DJ up here is not absolutely beat by the amount of subs that we have down here. Six of those. The mains are JBL 932 LAPs. These are actually brand new. This is a new set of them. And we've got them hooked up as such. The lower ones, if you can see in the middle there, is uh, the gain's lower down on this. And that is so the audio level from here to the back is the same. So the top ones you only hear if you are, you know, halfway or more. The bottom ones are what you're here if you're halfway and forward. Lighting, we've got one, two, three, four of these Rush MH1s. I can show you there. They're currently powered on. The displays go dark. And then we've got some of these Rogue R1 
I don't remember exactly what these are. We'll kind of look at them here a little bit. This is the Rogue R1. These have the uh, one, two, three, four, five heads on them and both pan and tilt on each of those heads and the whole fixture itself is infinite. So they'll sit there and spin. We've got four of those up here and again, four of the MH1s, two of them down here as well and 932s on that side. We have a MH2 up there in the center and we're just gonna point that down for like a DJ light. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, hazing wise, the MA Stadium, La Chave. That thing will absolutely haze this place up. We actually do have to be kind of careful in here because they do have smoke detectors and not heat detectors. Uh, so DJ wise, we've got two of the SC5000 Denon players and an X1850 mixer here, the DJ will be using. Lighting is a Shamsis board. I don't know much about this because I'm not doing lighting at this event, but that is the lighting person's stuff. And then of course, we've got all the different DMX stuff down here, including an ArtNet node. So yeah, and the data streams I think are just to split the DMX up so we have DMX running to everything. But yeah, trussing's up in kind of like a triangular shape, which I thought was kind of cool. Back there we've got Austin doing some system tuning. Uh, let's take a look at the back here. All right, so back here, we've got all the amps and processing. So the first things first, come out of the DJ mixer, over here into a Midas MR12. And this is just doing some basic system processing. We have a microphone input here. Uh, this is for our RTA stuff. Come on, focus. And then we just have our main out. So nothing really fancy here. Um, these output down to this drive rack. This is a drive rack PA2, we've talked about this one before. And uh, this drive rack here then outputs to the three sub-amps. Uh, two of them are PLX 3402s, top and bottom. And the middle one is an NU3000 by Behringer, NU3000. And uh, this one is actually doing those rear-facing subs. So we have a little better control with this one for that. Those rear-facing subs are inverted. Hey, you can probably hear them running some uh, make noise now. The rear subs are inverted. so. And they are time aligned to the front of the array so that we get rear cancellation and not up front. Power distro here, 1430 input. All of our power runs back down through here. And again, I apologize about the noise. And then back there in the back, which we can't really see right now, there is a 100 amp distro that is wired directly into the power. It's actually three phase, so it's actually a three phase distro. And then, yeah, up here is just all the basic system processing. It's a bit of a wire mess. I need to work on my wire management. We're low on time, so we had to do things like that. So let's take a look out front. We'll go meet up with we'll go meet up with Austin out front and uh, have him explain about what he's doing. All right, so we're out front here, and uh, I'm gonna actually let you talk a little bit, buddy. Hey. So this is Austin. He's our system tech. So we got a lot going on here. What's what's going on, dude? So we got open sound meter going. And we're getting some FFT measurements from the system. We're getting our subs lined up. So we get cardio, we get the tops lined up. A couple measurement mics, a few different positions. Basically just getting time alignment, making sure nothing's weird going on in the space. Mm -hmm. so, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So you got a lot of stuff over here. Without getting so, too deep, that's about it. Yeah. Um, if you guys want a more technical explanation, then uh, Austin has a channel as well. I'll actually link his channel in the description of the video specifically for it. If it's not there when I upload this, just wait, it'll be there soon. So uh, he'll do a more technical explanation for you guys. Ooh, fancy SSL box here. Yeah. So you're outputting pink noise from your computer. Right. Going to this, and that's going into the system through that mixer I showed you back there. And then... I also have a loop back. Okay. It's internal in this that's coming back so we can use coherence in the program to compare what we're actually hearing with what we're getting back through the reference so we know if our data is good. Okay, so like it's it hears itself and it hears the system and it compares the two basically, Correct. right? And there's a time delay built into it so there's no time delay artifacts in it. Okay, yeah. that makes basically, sense. Basically it's checking itself to make sure the data is good. Okay, very cool. So yeah, here's just the processor so you can sit there and mute stuff and look at our crossovers and things like that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. You want to fire some pink noise up there real yeah. quick and show us what you're looking at? Okay. 
Okay, that was loud. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that loud. <laughs> so coherence on that doesn't look super great. So I'm just trying to find a good place to put the mic where I'm not getting a lot of room artifacts into it. Yeah, because this is a pretty large room. So we're going to have slap back off that back wall, sidewalls. Oh, you know what? Everything else. <laughs> All right, so some of you might be asking, why do we even do this? Why do we go through the time of setting up a whole whole rig and checking system coherence and things like that? And uh, Austin, why do we do this? Because we're obsessed with perfection. <laughs> <laughs> we only do the best, okay? Yeah, so, I mean, it's the only way that you can verify what you're hearing is actually what you're hearing. So yeah. it helps us plan designs later and get to know the equipment better, basically. It's more repeatable. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just showing up, throwing stuff up, moving around till it sounds good. It takes longer to set this up, but probably not as long to just use the math to figure out what's going on than moving stuff all over the room all day and going by ear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so like I said, we, we, we want to have everything as perfect, perfect as possible. And if we take the time right now to get measurements, to know exactly what these subs sound like, to know exactly what these mains sound like, then next time we come here, we don't have to do any of that again. We already know. We put the stuff in the same spot again, we know it's gonna sound perfect. So one of the things we're trying to do a little bit more of is go through and get measurements of all of our equipment and even like roofs. Like here, we took laser measurements of the entire room here and that lets us decide if we get to another room, it's just like this, essentially, same measurements or close measurements, we can throw that into our software and know, okay, hey, our subs need to be this many feet from the back wall the mains need to be this far apart, things like that. So it saves us time in the future. And uh, like I said, we, we want to do everything as, as good as we can. Now, this does not substitute for experience. So sometimes we'll get to these venues and be like, man, after all those measurements, everything else sounds like crap. So then we make some creative decisions and make things sound better ourselves just by ear. Uh, again, experience. I've done this for so long now, I can get to a venue, fire something up, and be able to know, hey, well, that sounds like crap, we gotta fix that, and know where to fix it at. All right, Austin, so what are we looking at here with like an RTA? So this is similar to an RTA, and this program calls it a magnitude. Basically, this is an RTA compared to the reference coming back. So okay. it's more of an averaging of what it's actually hearing and what it's not hearing. And like I said before, your coherence is telling you how good your data is. And then we've got some little places in our data that's not great. We've tried some different mic positions. I'm really not sure what's causing that, but I'm going to take a guess and say it's physics in the room that's just yeah giving us we're getting a lot of, of slaps reading. off of so everything so we're not putting a lot of trust in these lower areas we're being careful with them and we're going to do some tuning by here to make sure yeah so i see a dip there between what is that 250, 250. and 500 yeah uh, it, w is that representative of like a dip in my EQ? Maybe I need to bump that up a little bit to uh, fix that? Would that, is that how that works? Not necessarily because the coherence has a dip there as well. So basically okay. it's saying we're not getting a good measurement in this range. Okay. So anywhere it's up tall, we can trust what we're seeing here. Yeah. Anywhere where it's down like this, we're going to have to just kind of play that by ear. Okay. Without moving the mic a million more times and trying some other things to get it lined up. Yeah. That um, makes sense. It could be something to do with the trim height of the speakers versus the height of the mic. There's a lot of factors that could go into yeah. it. Yeah, there's a bit of a dip between 1 and 2K there. And that, that may be, uh, if that's somewhat of an RTA, that's somewhat accurate off of these JBLs because these things are so harsh. That's why I don't like the 932 LAPs, is they are super, super harsh. Do you have just like an RTA you I can do. bring up there? I just pulled that up. So okay. if you look at the RTA, compared to the magnitude. Let me turn the coherence off of that one. So the RTA says it's fairly flat. Yeah, it looks good. And it, it sounds fairly even in the room now. Yeah. But compared to the magnitude, you can see where there's some places that our data is missing. Yeah. But overall, that's a pretty good looking RTA curve. I like that it's a not lot. Bad. I like the little dip closer up between one and two K. That helps with harshness so we can get our volume up a little bit louder. It does kind of trail off a little bit up here but uh, I expect some of that because we don't want to absolutely damage people's ears. So flat's not always the best curve. And to get that flatness, this is what we had to do to get there. So it's got multiple cuts and a little bit of a boost up there in the very top, which is trying to help eliminate that big sharp drop off there to help flatten it out. So we should yeah. have to, this is without the subs on. This is only the tops. Yeah, 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 just, just, just tops, yeah. Subs are completely different. 
And uh, but overall, yeah, boy, that sound that looks good. I like that. We should probably get one with the subs on and just see what the overall level's doing. Yeah, you want to fire that up right now? I want to sit here and watch it. We definitely have some subs going. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a little bit of subs in there. Our balance our top to our subs. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it focused on the reflection. Because of where we're at, uh, you know, being a high school dance and things like that, I think uh, subs up a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything at all. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Again, we have a lot more stuff coming up. We've got some equipment reviews. We've got some Allen on Heath gear, some brand new mixers, some live sound stuff, some more DJ and stuff. Uh, we've got more problems coming up in the next couple weekends and some more school events, so stay tuned. You're going to enjoy it. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you all in the next video.